Tides at the flood, swirling currents, Father Neptune at odds with himself. These, since time immemorial, have been one of nature's strongest barriers to stay man's march toward progress. How to flaunt water's angry moods has been man's problem since the beginning of time, but progress was slow, limited by materials and engineering imagination. Then a century ago came an idea which gave wings to man, to bridge longer, deeper waters. Today, this basic idea, the application of wire cable to the suspension bridge principle, makes possible one of man's greatest achievements, the longest bridge span yet attempted to conquer that world-famous entrance to San Francisco Harbor, the Golden Gate. What memories this name calls to mind? From it went the clippers in the China trade. To it returned the commerce of the Orient. Through this gate sailed the 49ers seeking gold, and through the Golden Gate was developed a promised land, the Golden West. Today, San Francisco had become a great metropolis, worthy of the world's greatest bridge. With the highest towers and the longest main span, man has yet attempted. Though San Francisco is teeming with people, just a mile across the treacherous tidal current of the Golden Gate lies Marin County, with a paradise beyond it, the great Redwood Empire. Yet across the waters of the bay, now linked with San Francisco by the already famous Bay Bridge, Oakland is crowded with homes. So the bridge across the forbidding water of the Golden Gate must be built. But like Rome, this bridge was not built in a day. In fact, though started in January 1933 and completed in the amazing time of 53 months, this great bridge has really been building for more than a hundred years. For just a century ago, when San Francisco was but a few shacks on a rugged hillside, Johnny Roebling, then a young engineer, took out his license to practice engineering and was trying to make rope out of wire in a wheat field behind this Pennsylvania home. Working also in this experimental shop, he was laughed at like others in the fraternity of pioneers until his wire rope amazed the skeptics by hauling the boats of the Pennsylvania Canal up the Portage Railway over the Allegheny Mountains. This success portended the young engineer's destiny. With wire open cable, he now had a great new engineering material. He quickly adapted his new material to the suspension bridge principle in building aqueducts, such as this one. He erected the first of these at Pittsburgh in 1844. Wire rope vehicular bridge over the Monongahela at Pittsburgh. But even before the Civil War, Roebling was to startle the world. Here was a man who dared to move a fully loaded train and its iron horse over the gorge of the Niagara River. Other suspension bridges rapidly followed the Niagara. The Pittsburgh Allegheny in 1860, then the Cincinnati Covington. During all liberty, Roebling was in the plans of the bridge that was to be his monument, even though it was to cost his life, the Brooklyn Bridge. Just to see this old print with the thousands of sails on the river makes us realize the courage of a man who dared to plan a suspension span 1,600 feet long and wide enough to serve the traffic of two great cities. Here surely was a feat to stir the imagination of the people of that time and the admiration of generations to come. In 1869, after the plans of the bridge were perfected, accepted, and approved, Roebling received an injury on the work that was to result in his death. He left his son, Colonel Washington A. Roebling, to carry on, to complete the bridge, and to inherit a tradition of engineering preeminence hardly equaled in any other field. Small wonder is it then that the world honored John A. Roebling for his achievements. His statue in Trenton, his home community, serves as an inspiration for generations to come. With the cables of the Manhattan and Williamsburg bridges also spanning the East River, his son Washington and his grandsons have spread the fame of the Roebling name. Then followed two bridges over the lower Hudson, the Bear Mountain, and then the first bridge to connect New York City to New Jersey, the great George Washington Bridge. Less spectacular than his bridges, but equally important was the factory organization that John A. Roebling had founded to keep pace with his bridge pioneering. As the bridges were built, so the factories grew. Until today, the Roebling organization is made up of four great plants in and near Trenton, New Jersey. Under its own roof, Roebling controls every step of the process from the raw material to the finished product. Several thousand men fabricate wire and wire rope from the thickness of a hair to over four inches in diameter. Woven wire fabrics, 
from the finest screening to the heaviest industrial mesh. Welding wires of many grades and sizes. Insulated wire of all standard and many special coverings. So small it can be used in the finest instruments. So large it carries power to light entire communities. Special carbon and alloy steel flat wires in a wide range of sizes and heat treatments. And finally, in two individually housed laboratories devoted exclusively to pure science, metallurgists and engineers have developed wire testing apparatus found nowhere else in the world. Only with such manufacturing and research facilities is it possible to work out the unique materials and the engineering methods by which the Golden Gate Bridge cables were spun in record time. Now, let us study the suspension bridge principle. Main towers are firmly embedded to hold their tremendous loads. Hung over these towers and anchored at each end are the main cables. Then, unlike other bridges, the great weight of the roadway and the traffic it will bear is suspended from these cables. How this principle is adapted to the Golden Gate Bridge is shown in a cross-section view looking toward the Pacific Ocean, highly compressed here to fit such a long bridge into the picture. Note that the South Tower is on the side where the city of San Francisco lies, and the North Tower is close to the shore of Marin County. The strong tides of this Golden Gate have worn the channel down to 318 feet near the center. Above the water, the bridge allows 236 feet of clearance, high enough for any liners or Uncle Sam's battleships to pass under. This clearance height is accomplished with towers 746 feet above the water. This tower height also makes the great length of the main span possible, 4,200 feet, the longest ever attempted. Unlike the George Washington and many other suspension bridges, one of the towers, the south, was placed 1,100 feet from the south shore in 70 feet of water. Because it is placed so far out in the treacherous Golden Gate, the South Pier must be protected by a heavy concrete fender wall, strong enough to withstand a collision with the greatest ocean liners and the constant tug of war with the tides of the largest landlocked harbor in the world. Four times a day, the water of a harbor covering 450 square miles races in and out of the narrow gates, smashing at these foundations. But slowly and surely, steel and concrete build this sturdy island right in the Golden Gate. In the meantime, the North Pier is completed and huge derricks begin to raise the steel tower toward the sky. The South Tower builds up rapidly too, as the Bethlehem Steel Company erects the great steel members and rivets them fast. Many rivets are needed. In fact, someone figured out that if all the rivets used on these towers and on the roadways were placed end to end, they'd reach a distance of 32 miles. The San Francisco Tower is taking form as the Marin Tower is completed. Time after time, the great derricks, rigged with rolling blue center wire rope, place the steel sections as far up as they can reach. Then, with a foothold on the steel which they have erected, the derricks literally pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Thus, the tower continues to grow, getting nearer and nearer to the point on which will rest the great cable. When finished, each tower will contain 21,500 tons of steel. That's enough to fully load a freight train almost 10 miles in length. Near the top, another large section is swung into place. When the top is reached, the towers will be 746 feet above the water, 111 feet higher than those of the next longest suspension bridge, the George Washington at New York. 150-ton saddles hoisted to the top of each tower in three sections will seat the cables and hold them in place. To accommodate the stretch in the side spans, these saddles move on rollers. If you were going up in that man hoist, you'd realize what it means to be a bridgeman. And if you were not too sick to look around, you'd see San Francisco to the south of you, with the famous Presidio in the foreground. When you're up that high, you're sometimes above the clouds and see only the tops of the mountains to the north. 
On the shore behind each tower, you'd find the huge concrete mass to which the ends of the cables will be fastened. Since there's no giant strong enough to take the finished cables and hang them right over the tower tops, man has to depend on something greater than any giant could ever be, his own ingenuity. Man spins the great cables out of thousands of small wires laid parallel. But before he can do that, he must build a preliminary bridge on which he can do his spinning. First one rope, then several, and finally a series on which he can support this temporary bridge from one anchorage to another over both tower tops. This temporary bridge is called a footbridge, or sometimes a catwalk. Here the end of the strand has reached the tower top. The footbridge strands are anchored in concrete. Long bolts permit adjustments for proper tension. Hanging footbridge strands similar to these between the towers across the Golden Gate require the help of the Coast Guard and a system of shortwave radio communication to regulate gate shipping as a barge ferried the footbridge strands across from one tower to the other. Let's listen in as the Coast Guard boat patrols its course to clear the way for the barge on its first trip across from the operator at South Tower calls the boat. Hello, Coast Guard. Hello, Coast Guard. South Tower talking. Are we all clear? All clear. Go ahead. And you, Marin Tower, are you clear? Can the barge start across now? Hello, South Tower. We're all set here. Are you ready, barge? Ready here. All clear. Go ahead, barge. Okay, we're coming across. We're riding fast, reeling out fast. Current's pretty heavy today, so we're heading up a bit. Here comes the halfway connection. Now we're all clear to the south tower side. And so the supporting cables, one by one, are laid on the channel bottom for the preliminary bridge and then hoisted separately to the tower tops. Here the last strand is finally up to the tower top to be fastened to the end of an adjusting rod. This permits a perfect fit. All footbridge strands, both in the main span and side spans, are in place and we're ready to construct the footbridge. The first steel to be hung from these temporary strands is the large cross bridge to be located midway between the towers, known as mid-span. This cross bridge, hoisted to the top of Marin Tower, is slung from work cars, which in turn roll it out on the strands to mid-span. Oh there, the work carriage is stuck. And these two bridgemen volunteer to take a little trip out along the footbridge cables. Bridgemen call it swimming the cables. Swim, fellas, or you'll swim the gate, hundreds of feet below. Did they make it? Well, here they are. Meet Muggs Anderson and Clyde Hepworth, the first men to cross the Golden Gate Bridge. Platforms on which the bridgemen will work to spin the cables are now placed to form our temporary bridge. These are slid down to position in groups. This woven wire mesh, another rolling product, was found strong enough to hold the weight of men and equipment without excess weight. You may have realized by now that balance makes the suspension bridge possible balance of the loads on either side of the towers. To maintain this equilibrium, all work proceeds from the towers, out both ways. Thus, as the platforms are placed toward the center of the bridge, others are being hoisted up the sides of the bridge. Let's take a ride down on the work carriage and see how it feels to be a bridge man out in the middle of the Golden Gate. There goes the tower top. <laughs> 
No chance to turn back now. Thank you. 